it is my pleasure to welcome the founder of Magic Bus, Matthew Spacey. Welcome to Showbiz India. It's so great to well, see thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and be talking to you and on your wonderful show. Thank you. When I was reading about how you got involved, you were a rugby international star at one point. You've lived in India for quite some time and you had that life-changing moment where you saw children playing. I'd love to hear it from your point of view. I went to India uh, 26 years ago now, gosh. And uh, I went to actually originally run a company there. And you know, you land up in a place like Bombay, you know, which is I think now 25 million people. And, and, and literally the city, is a city where 12 and a half million people have and 12 and a half people 12 million 12 and a half million people don't have and you know so it's a that visual impact as a foreigner it's it was huge for me and so you know i uh so so in the back of my mind anyway i wanted to do something so i took um i took 30 children from a street called fashion street and i walked them through the front doors of the bombay gym Khan. and this is like taking kids from skid row and putting them through los angeles country club you know this is that kind of thing uh, and so and you can imagine you know that just doesn't happen but because we were playing sport we could cut across all these things all those cliches you hear about sport leveling the playing field and all this but it was true you know and so for two hours the poorest children in India were playing against some of the richest children in India and no one really cared and that sort of you know that was the sort of in many ways the inspiration the whole sort of thought behind Magic Bus came how we can use the medium of play and sport to start interacting more relevantly with young people. Today Magic Bus is run by 8,000 young people who live in the slums and the villages of India and they take on the mentorship of younger children within their own community. We don't allow paid staff. We have 2,000 paid staff. They're not allowed to go and teach the children. Has to be by these, these, these uh, you know, a, a girl in a village has to be able to look up to her diddy, uh, her mentor, and say, I can be her. So we created a program which used sport initially and does use sport. Um, it then develops uh, life skills which move into employability skills. And we do this over a, 12, over a seven year program, which is called the Childhood to Livelihood Program. So today we have half a million children on that program. And you know, they, they're on it yesterday, they're going again tomorrow. Uh, and we make sure that every child finishes school. We make sure they don't get married, because in India we still have over 30% of our marriages are still uh, child marriages. Um, and that we get them jobs. So this is the sort of stake in the ground for Magic Bus. So, you know, we, we're literally every year, tens of thousands of young people are are moving through this program and getting placed in jobs by Magic Bus. I came to play, I stayed to learn. I learned to uh, care, share and to be fearless. I also completed my master degree. And working on a salary basis. Now you're from Houston and you've been part of the U.S. chapter. Tell me when did you first hear about Magic Bus and what did you feel? We got involved in Magic Bus about seven years ago. Arpita's cousin Rahul took a full-time position with Magic Bus USA when he returned back from India. And once we, uh, once we heard about the cause, it just really struck a chord with us. And uh, since then we've been very involved with Magic Bus. Have you been back to India and experienced what they actually do? Yes, so about seven years, eight years ago, um, we went to, uh, to India and celebrated our youngest daughter's first birthday. And part of the celebration was on her birthday, we visited the Magic Bus uh, program center and saw their program delivery. And that since that day, we've been believers. As a family unit of five, we've been believers of Magic Bus and the work that they do. I have been familiar with the work they do, and what strikes me is very different, of course, and I think something great that a lot of charities don't necessarily think about is the sports aspect of it. What do you feel? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, so, you know, if you enter any slum or any village, and if you just throw a ball up, whether it's soccer ball or cricket ball, kids will naturally gravitate towards it. So the whole idea is engaging the kids through sports, but then giving them life lessons. So it's more experiential learning across, and we engage with them for many years, so the message really sticks with them. You can think of that as a sanskar or upbringing, where you're you know, the same things that we grew up with, 
That's what we're trying to do for the kids in the villages and slums. As you said, you have a daughter yourself, and one of the missions, I believe, of Magic Bus is to make sure that the marrying age is delayed. What are your thoughts on that, Arpitha, being a mother? I just am so proud of the good work that Magic Bus is doing. Um, my understanding is that uh, Magic Bus children who are in the program, females, there's 97% of them do not get married uh, until the legal age. You're coming to Los Angeles for the first time. What is your vision of Magic Bus? We would really like to start chapters like Houston, now Los Angeles. We have a sold out uh, event tonight. We have over 300 people, uh, 350 people attending. And we would really like to spread the word of Magic Bus, get people involved, get people to donate and if people go back to India to go check out the good work we do. When 12 hours काम करता था, 12 hours काम करवा के लिए मुझे 150 रुपीस देते थे, वो 150 रुपीस मैं घर पे देता था घर के खर्चे के लिए. He used to work 12 hours a day for which कितना रुपया लगता था? 150. 150 rupees which is under two dollars. करके 150 रुपीस salary लेता था, आज मैंने eight hours काम करके 25,000 आज मेरा salary Thanks so much for doing such a beautiful event. It looks fantastic. How are you feeling? Very, very excited and humbled that we have this many people who have come for the inaugural gala in Los Angeles. So Anil, how did you get involved with this cause? Sure. First of all, love your show. We've watched it Thanks. on Saturdays. Even my seven and a half year old, we're starting to get him into it. Even though he doesn't really understand all the Hindi music yet, he'll get there. Uh, but really appreciate it. Uh, I learned about it from uh, Amit Bandari, who's the chairman of Magic Bus. Uh, he told me about it. He told me how he's personally invested into helping this organization grow and support children. And he talks about the transparency of the organization, which are available on their website. And he talks about how children really need confidence to be able to build themselves, to step out of just being another kid on the streets to being somebody who has a confidence to go find a job, to work, to graduate school. And that's what we learned about this organization. And for us, that made a massive impact. And Asha, you're a mother, I'm a mother, and I think it's very, very important for our children to be involved in seeing how privileged they are. What is your son's reaction? I know you're very philanthropic when you tell him that we're part of Magic Bus. He is so excited. He's going to be here tonight. And he's watched us working morning, noon, and night. And he sees that it brings us joy and that he's very privileged and with that privilege comes responsibility and it's just a part of our life and I think it's you get to give but you also get to give back. Very nicely said. Have you yourself seen the work of Magic Bots in India? Yes, we, uh, Asha and I went to a, a school where the kids were getting a chance to engage with each other and with the Magic Bus volunteers. And it was amazing because these are kids that are going to schools, their parents are laborers, their parents are rickshaw drivers, their parents are working class, and they just send their kids so that they get a meal, they get to be in school. And now these kids are in there, they're engaging with other kids, they're playing sports, they're opening up to these Magic Bus volunteers about what their concerns are and what their future and hopes are and those volunteers then were talking to the parents and telling them, no, your kid wants to do this. He wants to be successful. He wants to stay in school. And we saw that and we got a chance to see these kids do well in sports, get scholarships to colleges in India, and really start to see them open up. We're excited because some of those kids are here. They're going to talk about what they've done since then. And we got a chance to see that at the ground level in a little village in India as well and see the impact of it. How do they get in touch with you if they have children that they like to get involved? Uh, in terms of getting in touch with us, you can just email me directly. It's uh, A-N-I-L, P as in Peter, U-N-Y-A-P-U, at yahoo.com. And I will put you in touch with the right people within Magic Bus. But you can also just go to the Magic Bus USA website uh, and go in there and there's a link there to ask questions, to volunteer and get more information as well. I really feel for that lady who's translating for the Korean director. She wasn't very social um, before she joined the program. She was a 
bit apprehensive to talk to people. It, it takes a lot of guts. And uh, I'm pretty sure that she's going to go a very long way. So all the best to you, God bless you. Tell me Magic Bus, you're the patron, uh, cause is obviously very, very special to your heart. Tell me, how did you get initially involved? Um, well, it's coming up on, I think, nine years now that Ishwari and I uh, first uh, worked with Magic Bus. Uh, it had uh, to do with Aradhya, our daughter, and uh, we were looking to do something um, around her birth. And uh, Ishwarya thought it would be very nice to work with and do something for underprivileged children. And uh, as fate would have it, Magic Bus and uh, Ishwarya and I came into touch with each other. And um, then we just started working together and it's something that we work very closely with. And uh, Matthew and the entire Magic Bus team in India and now overseas have um, become like an extended family. And uh, it's been uh, nine very fruitful and uh, rewarding years for us and um, very happy to be a part of the Magic Bus family and to work with them. And how does your daughter react? Does she go often? Was that the one time only she went to see the children? Well, she was, she was a newborn baby when we first uh, worked with them, so uh, she wasn't aware then. But yes, she does know about Magic Bus and, uh, you know, back home, um, we have a, a small celebrity football team called All Stars FC and we play for a charity and the charity of choice is Magic Bus so she comes and supports that a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's very sweet. And Abhishek, you have always had sports as something that you like to do. You also bought the Jaipur Kabaddi team, yeah. right? Yeah. And so tell me, how do you think sports unites everybody? Well, for me, um, you know, uh, be it in school or in college, sports was an integral part of my life. And um, I think that's something that really resonates with me and Magic Bus as well because um, they use sports as well as a tool to empower children. And um, I've always believed that sports is a wonderful teacher of character and teamwork and team building. Um, and I think there are a lot of qualities that uh, any sport, playing a sport or being part of a team sport or an individual sport, can uh, teach you about life up ahead and uh, I'm so happy to see that principle be put to use um, in Magic Bus with all the children we work with. And where do you see Magic Bus in the next few years? Where would you like to see it progress? Well, by the grace of God and uh, some very generous uh, patrons that we have, um, you know, we're doing pretty well. Um, the idea is to impact the lives of underprivileged children and to take them, um, you know, all through our program and then hopefully enable them to, to get a job and then provide for their families themselves and be self-sufficient. Uh, I hope that we can you know, keep getting the opportunity to do what we do and um, make a difference to all these lives. So um, there isn't any end goal, it's just to carry on doing the great work that Magic Bus is already doing. As a sports fan yourself, um, I think you were a Kobe fan if I'm not mistaken. There's going to be a public memorial. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, so I got the gold on for Kobe. So, um, nice. Yeah, I've been a lifelong Laker fan, you know. Um, I was a small kid, I think I was about four or five years old when my father took me to the Forum to see the Lakers play um, the Celtics. And in those days it was, you know, Bird versus Showtime. So um, I've been a lifelong Laker fan and I definitely feel one of the greatest Lakers ever has been Kobe. And it's just absolutely tragic. I was filming in Kolkata for my um, latest film when I had an early call, so I was up at 3.30 in the morning when a friend of mine from the States sent me the message and it was devastating. I think to uh, the entire sporting world, it's been devastating. Um, he's just been such an iconic figure and such a mentor and uh, a beacon to so many, so many people. He just, it was, you know, if you come, in, come to LA, you see that he's impacted the entire city and they've taken it very personally. It's like a personal loss. And um, so, yes, obviously very devastated. Um, for him, for his daughter, for his family and the other families that were, you know, obviously affected by this horrendous accident and um, thoughts and prayers of strength to his wife and his children, uh, his parents and um, to Laker Nation. You know, being a, a Laker fan, it's, it's something that, that is very hard to, uh, you know, get over. But, uh, um, yeah, thoughts and prayers. So in conclusion, on a lighter note, will you be catching a Laker game anytime soon? Well, you know, I was going to go last night <laughs> to see them play the Grizzlies, but jet lag got the better of me. Um, I'd love to. The last time I went to watch the Lakers play at Staples Center was, wow, good, you know, almost 10 years ago when there was the All-Star Weekend in LA and my wife and I, you know, got tickets and we went. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a hardcore basketball fan, so, uh, so yeah, anytime you get an opportunity to go uh, see the Lakers play is great. So I sadly missed the game last night, but hopefully in the future. Well, it's always great to speak to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank and we you. wish you continued success. Thank you so much. Thank you.